Hello everybody, Dave Greer Rackets <clears throat> yeah, doing a late mate uh, update. Um, we're looking at the Tilo Brachys Pimbriatus enclosure. This one's named Priest. Um, don't know if it's a male or a female because I don't get molts from this one. So we don't know. Um, it's, it's put on a little bit of size. Uh, it hasn't molted since I moved it in here. But uh, it gained size pretty quickly in that softball enclosure so i'm just kind of doing a quick update on a few things that are going on something that's going to have to get done tomorrow which i should have done today i just didn't have the motivation now the pairing of the gbb stuff was enough for me for today uh, that was a total of four and a half hours with those two um it was it was successful uh, the last clip if you watch the video the last clip of her rubbing her furrow is uh, a good indication that she has successfully paired and uh, we should be seeing hopefully we'll see some uh, an egg sac here in the next month and a half or so uh, maybe two months we'll have to see um, the temperatures here will probably give her the heat that she's going to need um, to push that along a little bit so I thought we just you know we're going to feed a couple August fell season dummy we're going to try and feed uh, the Nandu Carapoinsis, and then a couple tarantulas that molted, and a, an enclosure I have to completely redo. I'm not real happy about it, but uh, we're going to have to do it because it, the little bit of mold that that was in it that I tried to get out is, is kind of blown up. Um, the springtails are not helping, and I can't wet it down because if I wet it down, the stuff's going to just blow up in there. So I will show you that, and then we'll take a look at the. two scorpions let's do that right now okay so here is the opisthothalamus walbergi the tri-colored burrowing scorpion and if you remember um, there was a startup burrow underneath the cork bark well the scorpion apparently wasn't too fond of that so it decided to burrow here in the corner I'm gonna throw a cricket in there and I don't know if that's going to you know, get him to eat or not. We've never, ever seen him eat on film, um, ever. And I'm not really holding my breath this time. But uh, it seems to be more at home now in this setup than it was before. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get some shots of this guy uh, as we go, you know. Um, again, it's been a long time since it's eaten. It's been a long time since it's molted. Well, it hasn't molted for me, so it's been quite a long time since it molted. <clears throat> but uh, it seems, like I said, it seems to be doing much better here. You can see that cricket. Oh, yeah, look at that. Are you kidding me? All this time. That cricket falls down there and boom. Food. Oh, that's actually a good sign. It makes me feel good that... You know, apparently I wasn't keeping it right the whole time. So uh, now we got that all sorted out. Hopefully we'll be able to see some more of this. We'll just have a cricket drop down to the depths of Hades there. And uh, we'll get a scorpion takedown. I don't know how much I can go. Oh, maybe not a scorpion takedown. Maybe that was just a loop it fell on me kind of deal. It does seem to have it in its claw, though, doesn't it? Looks like it. Oops, there goes my tripod again. Why does it do that? Just don't get it. Let's see if that helps. Put the legs out in front a little bit more. So, yeah. And that's the first time I tried feeding it since it's been in here, and it's it's grabbed the cricket. Don't know if it's going to eat the cricket, but it actually grabbed the cricket. No, it's grabbing it with the other claw. I want to see you eat it. That's what I want to see. Oh yeah, squish that puppy. And this goes back to that whole talk I said before about the, the scorpion claws. You can see how big 
of these ones are and how thin the tail is compared to the uh, hot and tata hot and tata and this one is not not even attempted to do oh there we go every time I start talking now this one's gonna do the exact opposite of what I said it was gonna do I didn't think it would sting it Ooh, right by the face well that's ooh, right in the head oh mama Sometimes I feel bad for those poor little crickets. I think if I was a cricket, I'd probably rather get, I don't know, I'd rather get fed to an assassin bug, because that seems to be pretty quick. Tarantulas are, you know, it's over pretty quick. I definitely wouldn't want to get fed to a mantis. That, mantis and scorpions. Well, mantis is probably more. The tail of swift scorpions, the vinegaroons, they're eating they're eating it a live animal. I mean they grab it, hold it, and just devour it. That's why they eat so fast. That's why praying mantises eat so fast. They have no way to disable it, so they have to get they have to eat it quick. Um, yeah, so this was kind of interesting. So let's take a look at the other scorpion. Uh, if it's out, it probably isn't. Uh, I think it's underneath the rock, but let's get it down and take a look. Okay, guys, so here is the hot and tata, hot and tata enclosure. Uh, of course, we, you can imagine where the scorpion is. Um, I've considered changing that out to something a little bit smaller, just so that we have a little bit of visibility with it. Um, I mean, I still want some place for it to hide under. What I'm going to do is go through my stuff here and see if I can find something that's really going to be um, more viable. A little piece, piece, small piece of cork bark in there, you know, I'll have. I want it to kind of have a concave to it where the scorpion can get underneath there a little bit we'll we'll dig something out like a concave in the sand and put that over top of it for it um because that rock is big i mean it's it's half the enclosure really and it's got a lot of room to to be underneath there which is means we're just not going to see it and you know, this cricket is like eating the leaves You can see them there eating the leaves. So I just wanted to, you know, give you guys an update on this because people were asking about it. And uh, I've actually had a lot of people say they've been looking for these. Um, and I kind of fell into this by chance. It was just someone that, you know, I haven't been friends with it for a long time, but I know, you know, I've known about him for a long time. Um, I can't remember if he sent me the request or I sent him the request, which is kind of, you know, uh, the, it's a mute point, really. But he... Uh, he had some, so I was like, hey, you know, what, what What are we looking at? And, you know, it was just one of those deals that it was something different. I haven't seen him in a long time, um, so I kind of pulled the trigger. Um, yeah, so what do we have coming up? There's not a lot, really. I mean, I'm still trying to get footage of that. From Mictopus Cancerides, every time I try to do, it, it runs down the burrow. You put a cricket in there, the cricket goes down the burrow, and then you don't see the tarantula. So... Um, it may be have to rehouse that one into something bigger anyway, so we might just do that and use that as as the uh, Haiti part of the tarantula collection tour video um, And then we'll jump into Columbia and get that uh, Apolopa species Columbia large um, That's still a sling, but probably you know, maybe just a You know, I think in, in Europe they would call it grown on sling It's not really a sling because you know, they only get about four inches long as females, so uh, it's probably about an inch and a half, maybe inch, maybe inch and a quarter, inch and a half, somewhere in that area. So, I mean, you could call it a sling still, or you could call it a little, you know, a, a young juvenile. But, uh, <clears throat> and then my brother's got a box coming in on Tuesday. I'm going to go pick up for him. We'll bring it over to his house. We'll see. Maybe we'll film the unboxing of that, even though he was, he was thinking he wanted to get Petco to do it for him. So Petco's going to have to get on a plane and fly, fly from Croatia and be here uh, Tuesday morning. So I don't think that's going to happen, Chris, so you're gonna be stuck with me. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's check out this enclosure that we're gonna to have to redo, and I'm not really looking forward to this one. So let me show you. Okay, well I could very well be wrong. Uh, well, there's still a few spots right here. You can see right here, uh, there was quite a bit of mold in this area. And I put another spoonful of springtails in here to try and take care of that and there was actually quite a bit of stuff but I'm not really keen on this white stuff but I do believe that that is just tarantula poop to be honest with you um, but I'm not 100% sure 
So, and it's dry and chalky, so I don't really believe it's anything major. But we do have this area right here, and you can see uh, springtails are still kind of walking around through that little bit of uh, dirt. I put a spoonful in there a long time ago because I really, really wet the enclosure down because I knew the trench was getting close to molting, and we got a little bit of mold right in this area on this this branch. Um, I've used this branch three different times and never had a problem with it, but now I'm having a problem with it, so I'm not really quite sure what to do. I think we're going to see if the springtails do their job in here. If not, uh, we're going to get this uh, this little one out of here, uh, which is the Stelmopaeus Armenia. This is why I'm not looking forward to it, because it's 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 about yay big and fast as lightning, and you know these these top opening lids that are square are not the easiest thing to get them out of. So that'll be a you know, piece of cardboard or a piece of plexiglass with some holes in it. Get it up to the certain point with the big hole in the middle. Get it into a catch cup and then uh, transfer it in. You know, we'll clean this enclosure out. Put something different in there for it and uh, put it back in. Because I, I do like I do like the enclosure. Um, it, it's I, I like these a little bit better than, you know, these. You know, these things here. The thing that we had to squirt in are these, these things here. I mean, I like these. Um, but the problem is these, you know, these top lids open so easily that we have to put something, we have to put something on these to keep them down uh, as tarantulas grow because we don't want them just, you know, to bump up there and pop it off. They pop it off, they're going to get out. That, that's pretty, pretty simple. Um, if I put them up on the shelves, I'm not really going to have that problem because they're not going to be able to pop them off. There's not going to be enough room for that to happen. But I, I do want to make sure that we get something taken care of for that one. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let the springtails do their things. We're gonna try and feed it, and then probably, I, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take them out, and we're gonna clean everything off. We'll take that piece of wood, uh, we'll completely clean that off, and let it sit outside and uh, dry out, and see if we can use it for somebody else at a later date. I think three different tarantulas have used this so far, so I don't know what's changed with this one. Um, actually, this enclosure probably has more ventilation than the other other enclosures that it was used in. So, okay, with, with that being said, let's take a look at the Syriopagabus hottie hottie, see what that one's done, and then we'll, uh, we'll feed the Nandu carapolensis, and we'll take a look at a couple tarantulas that have molted. I don't know how much you can see, but there's a little burrow right there in the very corner. You can see the hole right there. That's where the tarantulas actually burrowed down into the dirt, and then it just webbed up everything here and brought all that dirt up into that webbing to give it more... Um, security I guess you know that's what they do it they, they bring that dirt up there so uh, other animals don't really know that they're there just kind of a mask really that's their kind of veil or you know people call them dirt curtains um, but it's really just a a camouflage for them to be able to hide and protect themselves while they go through molting processes or in pre-molt when they're not very active and then of course after molt when they're still recovering from molting uh, I, I would assume that after that we'll start to see it just a little bit more I know they are not a species that is out all that often, but uh, hopefully um, it'll be out, you know, a, a little bit more than, than most. At least that's my hope, and we can always hope for that, right? So, uh, yeah, those are the kind of the, the ones that have been rehoused, the one that needs to be rehoused. Uh, and then we got to do some cleaning. Samopaeus pulker salem, Samopaeus pulker we put in that zoo med there. You can see... Um, she started to poop all over the glass, and then this gal here. Uh, every time I want to clean her, she likes to hang out in the front. And when I open it, she'll stay there. She won't move. So I have to slightly open it and then slide the skewer in there to get her off there. And then make sure that she's safe and secure in the back so I can slide the cardboard down um, and then clean this front. But when I do that, then you can see on the side also we got to clean. But... They definitely need to get done, so that's on the docket for this week. <clears throat> and uh, let's take a look at, uh, we'll feed the Nandu care points this last, because that's probably a good way to end the video. We'll take a look at a couple of tarantulas that have molted. Okay, I don't want to bother her too much, so I'm not going to take the lid off, but this is the uh, female Brachypelma albopelosum Nicaraguan. Um, yeah, I, I honestly wasn't expecting this to be honest with you. Um, I know she's been rather lethargic the last little bit. Uh, the last probably two weeks, three weeks or so, she's kind of been just eh, hasn't been moving around a lot. Um, did not eat the last time I fed her. I gave her two small crickets and she just let them crawl all over her, so I eventually just took them out 
and she didn't move an inch when I was taking them out. I mean, my hand was in there getting them out with the pill vial, and she did not move an inch. But yesterday, um, I came home, and she was flipped over. So I was like, oh, when I saw this webbing here, and you could see all the webbing that's right here. When I saw that, you kind of knew. But, uh, yeah, she was upside down, so uh, she came through the molt fine. She's a 100% mature female, Brachypalma albopolosum, Nicaraguan form. Um, so I have the male, and then I have the younger male, of course, but this, this male that I have here, which is Declan, <clears throat> once he matures, we'll probably try and pair them. Um, let's see what happens. Well, they are both Nicaraguan form, and so is the little sling that I have. Well, it's not a little sling anymore. It's probably a small juvenile, inch and a half, inch and three quarters, almost two inches probably. <clears throat> so, yeah, she was one of the ones that molted. Let's, uh, let's check on the other two. I think there was two other ones that molted. Okay, this one's been a tricky spider. Um, went for a while, and I, I was like, there's no way this is a Lassiodora species. There's just absolutely no way, because it just wouldn't eat, it wouldn't eat, wouldn't eat. Uh, it molted finally, and um, it was still kind of reclusive. It built itself a burrow down below, and that's where it was staying. Um, you could see there was there's a cricket in there that I probably ought to get out of there. <clears throat> it's dead. Um, I think that was the last time I fed it. Didn't know it was in pre-molt because it was down below. Uh, it didn't look fat to me. Uh, so it probably killed that cricket and left it. Uh, it molted probably two days ago. Uh, the molt is down in the burrow. Uh, no way to get to it. And uh, this, well, this is the Lassiodora klugi, by the way. Uh, but it put on a little bit of size this time. So we're, we're probably going to get to the point where we're going to see some, some serious hammer takedowns and uh, probably be a candidate to move out of here into the next size up, which would be the softball enclosure, just because this one's going to gain size uh, pretty good from here on out every time it molts. Um, yeah, so that's one, another one of the tranches that molted. Let's get the other one down. All right, you're going to get a little glare here. I can't help that. Maybe I can by moving it here a little bit. Now we're just going to get a tad bit of glare off this, but yeah, you're not going to see the tranches very good. That is the Harpactera namaquiensis. Um, that one molted and probably gained a good three-eighths of an inch. I was surprised. Uh, this one caught me off guard, too, because this one ate probably two days before it molted. Um, which, again, you know, you just never know sometimes. Uh, it's been fine. It hasn't acted weird. Uh, it ate, and then two days later it molted. So it's been like three days now. So uh, I feed all of these slings together, and they I, I feed every single one of them. Um, you know, w without being able to look at them for sure to tell if they're in pre-molt, a lot of these ones that, now this one, although this one isn't dug, and, and I just, I honestly got, I didn't see it. I just didn't see that it was in that pre-molt phase because I put the cricket in and hammered it right away. So, uh, yeah, so this one molted, and then we have one more. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it, if she's going to be out or he, I'm not quite sure if it's going to be out or not, but we'll, we'll give it a shot and bring it down and see if we can get, if we can see it. Okay, I was going to put this one in here, but uh, I, I said, what the heck. Now, this is the Bumba Cabocla enclosure. Um, I just fed it. Uh, of course, the cricket went down the burrow, and that's where the tarantula is at, so I'm not even going to bother trying to mess with it. Um, I just pulled the molt out because it brought the molt up finally. So we'll kind of give it a little bit of moisture here and uh, spray down the substrate just a little bit, get some water into the water dish, and then put it away. Um, Looking kind of sharp from what I saw. Um, haven't seen. There's the lid. I was going to say, where did I put the lid? I haven't seen a lot of this tarantula since it molted, but uh, it's been a little over a week. So it's probably a good time to feed it. And uh, I think that's it as far as the tarantulas that have molted. Um, we do have a couple that need it. Um, my Brachypelma erratum definitely does. Um, that little one needs to molt pretty bad. But uh, we're going to do checkups again here another day. Um, yeah, soon. I, I don't check on them every day. Um, and this is a question that was asked to me. You know, how often do I check on them? The ones that are visible in front of me, you can see them. So I don't really have to do checkups on them. But the ones that are definitely, you know, on the Tetra shelf here, uh, I, don't, I don't move them around every day. It's just because, you know, I'd constantly be disturb disturbing them all the time. 
uh, and it's not necessary to check them every day. I mean, how many of you guys have fossorial species that you don't see for six months? Um, there's no really way to check on them. So they don't need as much water as everybody makes them out to be. I mean, it's good to have water dishes in there, but as long as you, again, gut load their prey, they're going to be okay. I'm not saying not to give them water, but, you know, everyone's like, oh, you got to top off that water dish every day, and that's just not true. Um, I do watering, again, you know, shelf by shelf. I try to pick a day, uh, and, and it's been worse now that I, you know, been feeling the way I have been um, to accomplish that. So, I mean, I could go two weeks without giving them water, and they're still all perfectly fine. Uh, but when I do bring them down, I make sure that before I put them back up there, I generally give them water. Sometimes I forget because I'm in a hurry. But, uh, you know, don't fret too much. Uh, they retain their liquid. Um, they're going to be okay. Again, I know people that do not give them water at all. They give them gut-loaded prey. They'll dampen down the substrate, and that's the end of it. No water dishes at all. And they've been keeping for 25, 30 years. No issues. So, uh, let's finish up with the Nandu carapoensis. And... Uh, I guarantee she'll eat. I will probably really want to give her give her a mealworm or two. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're going to go with a super worm for her. Uh, she's been absolutely insane since I brought her down. So this probably will go quick. I'm sure it will. Hopefully she doesn't take off. Oops. Yeah, right away. She doesn't mess around. She never has. So this is another one, we'll, we'll give her a spray real quick, give her some water. She was kind of hanging there at the water dish, so she may appreciate a drink. I don't generally miss her. Um, I, a lot of people like to miss the South American species, you know, the Canthoscurias, the Nandus, the Lassiodoras, I, I found it's just not necessary. Um, I even think the Sturmies and Blondies, I think people get a little overboard with that. I'm not saying that they don't need a little bit of extra moisture in their enclosures, but I just don't think that they need as much as everybody makes them out to. Um, I think the ones that are wild caught do. Um, specifically because they come from that, they're already geared for that. Um, they grew up in that and they, they thrived in that. So if they're wild caught and they're brought to you that way, um, you almost have to, to go damper with, with wild caught animals, I believe. Um, you know, it's, it's stuff that comes from a more humid, damper area, um, Brazil, you know, most of South America, really. Um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about on Palma species that are found here in the United States that come from, you know, Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, a little bit more dry there. They generally don't have a lot of a lot of rain, a lot of liquid, and you know the ground pretty much dry what they live in. So I wouldn't get overly concerned about stuff like that. But uh, yeah. So uh, one other thing that I did that uh, failed miserably. Well, not miserably. It just didn't. It just didn't work. I tried putting the uh, orange gecko, the Nova, in with the other two, and uh, Luna didn't seem to mind. Uh, she didn't really pay him any mind, but Soul beat him up. Um, chased them, chased them into the big hide and, and, you know, was sniffing them, licking them, and he bit him in the back leg, and, you know, he, he was licking his head, and it was freaking the other one out, and I knew that that wasn't good. Um, if I left him in there, it probably would have, would have came down to, they probably would have bit his tail off or something, and so I took him back out. So he's going to be a solo guy, um, but, yeah, it probably wasn't a good idea to have three of them in that, that uh, enclosure anyway. Um, snapping turtle is going to be released this week sometime. Um, we we're going to do it today, but we just didn't have, Alex didn't give me enough time. I didn't realize he was leaving that early in the morning. And I thought he was going to Edinburgh and he was going to the peninsula. I don't want him to release it at the peninsula because they don't, they kind of frown on that. Um, you know, bringing, bringing an animal from a, from a pond or something else that may have, something that's not down at Presque Isle that uh, they definitely don't want to bring back. Now, it's been in an aquarium forever, so it doesn't have any of that stuff, but I'd like to put them kind of back 
close to where he was, so we're going to take him out to Edinburgh Lake and let him go out there. So that's on the docket, so I can get this 10-gallon aquarium out of here. Um, what else can we update? The assassin bugs are all still doing good, all six of them, and oh, the Belfouris. Uh, again, we're in a phase where we're not seeing them, and it's because uh, three of them molted again, and uh, they they made a burrow right at the edge of the enclosure. Um, we you can't really see into it because they have it webbed, but uh, if if I shine a flashlight right up there, I can see, and they are really, really, really that cream color that they are. All three of them are that way. Um, the fourth one is in the other part of the burrow. That's the one that was a little bit smaller, and it's still a little bit smaller. So, um, yeah, it's lagging behind, but uh, it still seems to be fine. Uh, the only problem that I have is I have absolutely zero access to the molts, so I can't grab them to even have an idea for sure um, exactly what we have, you know, males versus females. My solo Balfouri, I still have not seen in forever. Um, I actually really wanted to take them all and put them in the big football helmet display case or soccer ball display case, whatever you want to call that basketball display case, uh, and, and get that all set up and put all five of them in there together and just let them go and, and, and be on their own. I think that that one would be fine with the other ones because that one's going to be a male, so I don't know. I mean, I would expect him to mature probably the next two molts, but again, I haven't seen them in forever, so I don't know. So, yeah, that's kind of it for the updates um, for today. Uh, there's going to be some rehousings coming up. We're going to move some stuff out of some vials into some baseball cubes, and I think I have a softball cube enclosure that needs to be filled, and we got a couple. We have one enclosure this size, one enclosure one size bigger than this. This is the these are the longer longer ones that I have most of my juvenile tarantulas in. We have one mini football helmet display case. Uh, we need to take that Brachypelma albopelosum female out of the enclosure that she's in, but she just molted, so we got to give her time. Um, and I want to move the Cereopagopus lividus into uh, the same type of enclosure that the GBB is in. Um, we'll fill it up about that high with dirt. Uh, that trench is a little over two inches, uh, so we'll put it in there and probably never ever see it again. Um, but it will save me from having to deal with that one, um, you know, because it, it doesn't need a new enclosure now, but we might as well do it. I have three of those open, so let's let's get one that buries itself in there. Uh, I'm also thinking about putting the, the Fauna Palma Simoni Juvenile into one, and that Probably that Brachypelma albopelosum female. We'll give her some nice deep, a uh, little bit moistened up substrate down low. I'll give her a nice starter burrow and see what she does. Uh, if she will dig, that's my hope anyway. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, again, I appreciate everybody's uh, patience and, and uh, listening to me talk again because I, I do tend to talk a little bit. Um, but... I think that's just part of my channel, and, and I don't really want to change it, you know. Um, I don't want to sell out, basically. I don't want to please a couple people that don't like listening to me talk a lot in in favor, you know, favor them in, in, instead of the people, the mass amount of people that do like to hear me talk. So that's the way we're going to keep it uh, as, as best as we possibly can. And uh, we'll see everybody in the future. Uh, I'm not sure when the next video will come out, but... Uh, I'm hoping that it'll be the next phase of the Tarantula Collection Tour. Have a great day. Uh, have a great beginning of your week, and we'll see everybody in the next one.